All right, guys, so in today's quick little episode, well, hopefully quick, but nonetheless, I'm gonna show you guys how to compression test your diesel. So in my case, it's the Toyota 2L engine, 2.4 liter turbo diesel, uh, but it essentially applies to every single engine, different configurations, different variances, but in essence, it's all the same. It's um, somewhat similar to a petrol engine, which I've done plenty of times. This is actually my first time doing a diesel, but it's uh, pretty straightforward. So without further ado, we'll uh, skip straight to it. Okay, so as you can already see, I've kind of pulled some stuff off. So I'm actually changing the glow plugs at the moment. Uh, this is actually a pretty simple job, but I thought while I've got them out, I may as well do a health check on this engine because I essentially don't really know much about the engine. Um, I can say that I have actually done all four cylinders. I've done three on each, three goes on each cylinder and they're all really, really good. I'll post some uh, results up on the screen. So I know that the engine's good. Um, one of the reasons why I'm doing the glow plugs is firstly because I don't know how old they are. Uh, they're cheap to do. Uh, the main reason is it's a bit hard to start on cold mornings. So I thought first step, I'll pull the glow plugs out and while they're out, I'll do a comp test to make sure that I haven't bloody melted or cracked a piston. That looks good. Um, obviously a leak down test would further do that but I don't have a leak down tester here but I can safely say that the engine's healthy which is good um, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking it's a leaky injector or a bad spray pattern or something so that's the next point of call I'll get some injectors and do them but nonetheless we'll get to what you're watching this video for and that is doing a compression test so over on the bench here this is my eBay compression tester this was like I don't know something around 50 bucks or so um, and I can say it works really well it's actually quite nice it's got the quick connect disconnect fitting it's got all different size uh, adapters so there's obviously um, injectors or potentially bigger glow plugs I don't know maybe for some big engines um, and also you know, all your normal size kind of small glow plugs so for for us it's uh, this fitting here but yeah essentially there's enough stuff to do all kinds of engines okay so when doing a diesel engine there's there's essentially two ways you obviously have to be able to get pressure from the combustion chamber. So there are two ways you can do that. You can either pull an injector out, which is obviously a lot more work, um, or you can pull a glow plug out. The most common is glow plugs. Um, I don't know when and where you would use injectors. Maybe someone could fill me in, comment below. Um, but essentially, that's how you do it. So they're really easy to pull out. Obviously, some of the more modern diesels will be a little bit different. So as you saw in the kit, we've got plenty of different options there. So essentially these are your glow plugs. Um, I've pulled these out earlier as you saw, each one is labelled. So kind of um, confirms my thinking that maybe I've got a leaky injector or so. Cylinder 3 is uh, pretty wet and it smells pretty diesel-y. Um, so that's that. That's why I was a little bit worried about what I would find on Cylinder 3, but so far so good. So what we'll do, we'll grab this fitting here. So what I like to do, and it's kind of common practice, especially on petrol engines, is, well on a petrol engine you'll pull out all your spark plugs, uh, that'll just help the engine turn over a lot easier, uh, less obviously you're not building up compression in the cylinder. So um, I've taken all the glow plugs out as you can see, so they go in these holes in there. Um, another thing I like to do is before I pull the glow plugs out, I'll kind of give it a bit of a degrees and a brush off around there so that I'm not potentially dropping any crap down the hole while it's out. So. Um, for the, probably this is the easiest hole for you guys to see, so I'll thread that in and then we'll just tighten it down till it's nice and snug. Obviously don't over tighten it, um, it just needs to be snug. So I'll go do that and then I'll throw the camera on the tripod and run through how to test it. It's actually really, really, really simple. So one thing that needs to be done, which is very important, you need to deactivate the diesel pump. So on this car in particular, it's this blue plug that I'm pointing to on top of the injector pump. That is the fuel shutoff valve. So I'll just unplug that. So now we're basically free to prime the engine and uh, we're not gonna be spraying fuel everywhere. For those of you with a mechanical pump, it's basically the same thing. Uh, there'll either be a plug or some kind of connector to the shutoff valve on the back of the pump. So. so if you don't know, have a look through your instruction manual for the engine or for the vehicle and it will have all the info on there. Or go on the forums, ask on Facebook, whatever. But It'll be pretty easy to work out. So next up, you get your gauge and uh, obviously the quick connect coupler will go down. You may have to kind of hold your thumb to lift that tang up. Then it will just push in 
and it's clicked on like that. So, nice big gauge. It's actually um, actually really good quality. I might try and get that gauge to hopefully stay put there, then you guys can, can see that. All right, so all glow plugs are out. Um, the fuel shutoff solenoid is disconnected, so we're not gonna be pumping diesel, which is good. Um, the gauge is hooked up. So what I like to do is I'll start from, you know, back to front, front to back, whatever. Um, I've got a list on my phone going. I've already, as I said, I've already done it and it's already looking good, but I'll run you guys through this. So what I will mention is obviously on a bone cold engine, the oil will have drained away from uh, the piston rings and the cylinders and you may get a little bit less sealing. So uh, what I actually did, I ran this engine for about a minute or so and then turned it off just so everything's kind of circulated. There's a little bit of temperature in it. Uh, I didn't want to run it too long, so I obviously don't want the engine block to be all nice and hot. But um, yeah, it, it's, it's good practice to, let's like, say on a warm engine, but if you just run it for a bit and then kind of do it straight after, it should be fine. Um, the main thing is as long as they're all consistent, um, you'll obviously be able to tell if there's a, quite a decent outlier. But uh, nonetheless, we'll be able to tell. And essentially it's time to just go and crank the engine. So obviously you want to have a fully charged and strong battery because you are going to be cranking it a fair bit. I like to do three series of cranks uh, on each cylinder and then take an average. Um, usually the first one may be a little bit lower then it'll work up and then maybe work up again. Um, you know, it's just, it's just good practice to kind of do a couple on each one and average it out. So, if you're watching the gauge, you'll be able to see kind of when it stops climbing. That's when you obviously want to stop because there's no point going any further. But I'm going to stop blabbing and I'm just going to turn the key and show you guys how to do this. And here we are, just like that. We are showing about 460 PSI on cylinder number two, which is probably about right for what I just tested, but nonetheless. So uh, obviously it's got a one-way valve in here, which is actuated by this little relief valve. So it will hold your highest pressure essentially. Once you've done it once, kind of release it out, do it another two times, and uh, yeah, that cylinder should be a good average and you'll be able to get a decent idea of the health and uh, what's going on so yeah that's literally all there is to it so you guys essentially a um, 50 60 dollar kit from ebay and you're good to go with uh, compression testing your engine so for me it, as i said it was just a health check i've i've done a lot to this car but i haven't really touched the engine yet um i'm actually quite glad that the compressions are really good across the board so um that's awesome. It's probably a good thing to do, you know, every now and then, maybe every 50,000 or so, or any time you change glow plugs. Not that that should be that often, but, you know, for the sake of, like I said, 50, 60 bucks, whatever, it's good to have it in the kit, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of work yourself. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys like this video. It's actually easy. I feel like I should go more into it, but there's literally nothing more to say. So, awesome. So... I'm gonna go and put some new glow plugs in and keep ticking things off the list on this vehicle. And uh, yeah, hopefully you liked it. If you did, there's plenty more videos on this car and plenty of other fast cars and all that stuff on the channel. So subscribe, like, share, comment, all that stuff. And remember to press the uh, bell down there so that you do actually get updates when you subscribe. So anyways, uh, let's go.